your video and put subtitles on all your videos? Um, the videos, YouTube puts subtitles on the videos, but they're not all perfect. So I would start with just letting YouTube do it, and as you need to fix them, go ahead and fix them. Do you, um, so you, you told you me of a site that allows you to Yeah, if you go into YouTube, it. I'm recording all this for you. So if you go into YouTube and then you hit CC, closed captions, uh -huh. um, and, and you then go you to just options, fix the ones. Oh, okay. um, these are their closed captions. But if you have your own video up, so this is like a video of somebody else's owns. Mm -hmm. If you have your own video up, so if I go to one of my videos. I don't know if I had to type it in myself. Well, you, you, you could do either. So if I go to my oh, videos. Okay. Are you going to make sure you do that? I mean, this would be a perfect thing for you to teach if you taught somebody who's Yeah, absolutely. Deaf. I do teach someone who's deaf. And yeah. what she does, though, is she's actually able to plug the, the video right into her port and she can listen to it through her um, ocular implant. Oh, okay. So it, um, or cochlear implant. So if you go into, let's see, where was it again? It's not there. There we go. So if you go into, Info and settings when you click on that on one of the videos that you own that you created, okay? Mm -hmm. And you click on captions, you can add your own captions. There is an mm -hmm. automatic captions. And the automatic I see captions. How off are they off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I turn it on, you can kind of see. So you can see it says English captions are on. This. I hope you've used your shoes. Hopsy? Yeah, the top story headline. So, like, it's it's not really it's great. It's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I if you make your own video, you might want to go back in and add your own track. Why did that start? Well, but when I actually make a video, one of the things I do, so it might make it easier, is instead of just making a screen recording video. This is all my stuff. Um, so let's say I wanted to make a video about headers. So I haven't quite made the video yet, but uh -huh. the first thing I do is I write a script. Right. Okay. Then I re do an audio recording of me reading the script. Mm -hmm. Then I'll do a video of the screen capture with the video playing in the background. So I can kind of get an idea of um, what the whole thing's going to look like together. And then I take all three pieces and mm -hmm. I put them together. So if I can see if I can have one that's already okay. put together. I do the video first. Then, while it's playing, I do the voiceover. And that works too. Afterwards. So here's an example. Here's I did, um, a, my, remember my presentation on fair right. use? Mm -hmm. So what I did is I, I did the presentation and I added the audio to it. So th I just ran through the presentation, so you can see I have mm -hmm. Audacity playing. Mm -hmm. So I have this little the character I use, which is a little bit of 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 but I didn't realize you had to pay for it. Laura once, she was all excited. She wanted to make one. I use um, the, yeah, the, it, what was it? Uh, what's the app I use? Um, Crazy Talk 7. It's like $30. Uh, total or month? No, it, total. Total? Oh, and, okay. Um, it'll do animations like this. It's called Crazy Talk? Crazy Talk 7. Then you just add in your own video file. Not your own video file. Your own audio file to their program, and it automatically syncs the two. It's taking a minute to load because i got so much going on. I'm going to get this. There it is. 
So there's my talking mug. Does, do the lips move? Yeah. Okay. So the okay. first thing we're so going to first do thing we're going is draw a little picture. Draw a little picture. So I'll take a smaller version of this because it's kind of creepy huge. Right, right. So I'll take a smaller version of this and put it in the upper right hand corner. Oh, okay. So that way it's not my right. voice talking, but, right. but that's where I shift the octave. Right. Because the higher octave, obviously, obviously I'm not going to sound voice. like that. Right, exactly. You know, I don't, never put my face on anything. I was a little upset when I gave it to Laura that now it appears every place that Google is. I never. Oh, yeah post any photographs. I yeah. just don't. That I thought was creepy. So, um, okay. and then you wanted to know how to do your post, right? Well, I can't decide how I'm going to do critiques. I want them to take pictures of their artwork or scan them into, so we could put them into one big museum space. I want a whole page that has, I guess it's sort of like a wiki for images that okay. has beautiful, so you could see their drawings on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. um, you could do it in Blackboard. You could do it in a discussion. Discussion. Is there something, Craig mentioned something, Padlet. Yeah. Um, it's, well, here's the thing. Y you you want to try to reduce the number of things that you're having the kids use. So like okay. instead of That's having important. them to use you know, all these different apps. If you could kind of keep everything within the learning management system, you, it's less passwords to manage. Uh -huh. You don't have to go check five or six or ten right. other places. Yeah. So it, it just in terms of so where's the best Right, where's the best place in Blackboard so, for something like that? Okay, Open. so if we just go to bigger? a unit and, right. So I would either do You know, I think if you go to okay, I think here there's too many messages, announcements, I think there's excessive. There's something called a portfolio you can create. So if you go to the portfolio's homepage, um, this is I think kind of what you want, where they're gonna create like a digital portfolio. But, but for the class. For the class. Right. Right. So you would create a portfolio. Let me just kind of see how this goes through. I haven't done gone through all this yet. So because they're really inserting test. an image. Mm hmm And to insert an image, really you go to do this right there. Right. Insert image. Right. And that's it. So this in terms of my mind, portfolios kind of makes oh, well. sense. And then you can still track its views and um, you know, you still have all the options within um it's in Blackboard. Blackboard. Right. Yeah. Okay. So to get to it, you got to go to insert. I'll show you. Um, when you create a new object, you can go either no, do why it here. Are they, like tools. Why aren't they. You have to go hearing? into a unit. Oh, in order to see. Yeah. It. Or you could do it right over here. If I you, guess I want to. You can add know, it to your toolbar. I didn't know. And they gave us, I thought, a horrible first. <laughs> they did. They did that really was fast. Horrible. And it wasn't clear, and it was. We wasted lots of time. So if you click on the plus sign and you go to the mm -hmm. tool link, mm -hmm. you can actually search in the drop down and you can add a tool that should link to portfolios. Mm. So you can click right there. And then you can make it available to users and you can call it whatever you want. So when you click submit, now on your drop down on the left, you'll have the portfolios. So you click portfolios, that then takes you to a class portfolio. So which is empty right now. <laughs> so what we have to do is actually put a portfolio into the class portfolio. So I'm going to go back to where I had that other portfolio. Okay, I'm calling it what I'm really going to call it. You know, all those things. Which is fine, absolutely. Okay. So right now it's going to be empty if you click on it. Mm -hmm. So but I'm going to go back to my tools just like I did before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add another tool link and I'm going to go to the portfolio's home page. I think this will be it. If not, it's I have the other way of doing it. So let me click on this. There we go. So my portfolio's um, received portfolios. 
So. Oh, it tells you where you got them from. Yeah. Where, when people send them, mm -hmm. I'll know who's. Yeah. Sending so this it. is all like. So it's part all part of, of the theirs. Blackboard system. Okay. okay. So I can cr create basic portfolio. Uh huh. So this would not be a link that you give necessarily to the kids. No. Yeah. Um, so you create a basic information portfolio. You put in the name. You put in a description. You can put in learning goals. Uh, you can, you know, preview the menu, uh, and then you can make it available, and you can make it shared. So we definitely want to make it shared. Right. So let's just do. And you did the that test. in editing in. I added another tool. Within the, what I'm calling no. this. No. Oh, separate list, one. It's a separate one. So you got to go up to the plus sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tools. And, and this is drop down to box to Portfolio's homepage. You have to add the link to that. Uh, so it's like a second, and this one I wouldn't make public. Okay. So test, test. So I'm going to leave all the settings as is. When I hit test, so now I have this portfolio here. And when I click on it, this is the portfolio. There's currently no items in it. Mm -hmm. So when I click on this little drop down arrow here, next mm -hmm. to the test, I can click build and edit the contents of the portfolio. So now I can start adding content. I can add content, I can add, create an item, I can add a link. So if I click add content, um, I can add a file folder. So this really is the kind of the system that you want to use and it makes the most amount of sense for the kids. Um, so let's say you're going to do your category, your museum, or how are you going to set up your museum? By student or by Students have to create their own. So students are going to have to create their own page within the portfolio. Well, right now the kids build using just a PowerPoint is what it is. Okay. They build their own in their own account, and they could share. So with me. what I don't they would really do is where I haven't even thought of how I would. They could upload their files to here, and then in here they would just browse to their file. So let me show you how to do that. So they would have folders in here and they would browse just to their folder. So for example, let's go back into here. That's where I want to do it. Okay. So these are some templates, but I want to see if there's a template for what you're talking about before we go too much further. Assignments, activities, grants, lessons. Okay, so I didn't realize certain things, so that's good that I see these things. Okay, so not there. All right, so let me go back to the portfolio's homepage. So every time you want to add something, you're going to... Oh, wow. Well, it lost the whole menu. Not okay, true. so I might have to go all the way back out. I mean, I don't know if she really explained the difference between content area, module page. I'm not calling them modules. It sounds like something that grows <laughs> in your throat. Well, okay. So the your content area, module page and blank page, all this stuff mm -hmm. you don't put here on the sidebar. Okay? Here's my structure that I typically use. So here's my first unit on internet history. So on the left, that's a content area. Content areas go on the left. That's the only thing I, I typically put on the left, unless I'm going to put some type of tool. Mm -hmm. The module pages and, and the blank pages I leave alone. So if you wanted to add some type of special page, you could add a blank page. So like my welcome page is from a blank page. Mm. Then for my units, I have my unit goal, which is hidden. The kids can't see it. Right, I have my they don't care about that. Enduring understandings, which mm -hmm. the kids can't see, and my essential questions, which the kids can't see. And then I have my unit divided up into modules inside a content folder. So to get a content folder, you go up into build mm -hmm. content folder. So I have my content folder. Then inside module one, I have my lesson. So I might have five lessons. This only happens to have one lesson. And when, so I, w I guess I really would love to see what they can see of your sure. stuff. What can they see? So that's what they see. That's what they're going to see. Mm -hmm. And when they click into it. So when they click into it, this is what they see. So they have, then I list all my items. So this is step one. And I write literally step one. Step two, 
Step three. Are they going to read that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Step four. And step your, five. And your step movies six. were very little. They're the things that I recognize. That right. Know, exactly. Time. Yeah. I just. You're going to leave them like that. For or now. Make them bigger. For now, I'm going to leave them like that because when they click on it, it actually does a pop up. Like and that. It, that's big enough. And that's big enough for me. Okay. Um, but the problem with using the movie version here is that you have to search through YouTube, and if uh -huh. you have a particular link, it's a pain in the neck to try to go back and find that YouTube video right. through their right. system. So I just prefer embedding it, especially if it's my own content. So then they have all their steps, and then... Are you going to leave the size of the fonts mm -hmm. just what it is? For now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my goal is to kind of get, get it up get every all the content in get everything organized and then go back and tweak it mm -hmm. so like as i've gone through this some of them some and of my units are better than others course. yeah this is a year-long course so like here is a module on color theory and you know when i first started playing with this one of the things i was playing with was trying a cat instead mm -hmm. of it so i tried the cat um and then one of the more recent things i did i tried um you know the talking mug mm -hmm. as opposed to the cat so like that would be under I think I put that under my yeah, one of my projects but then I have like an introduction video that goes at the beginning of the unit so this is at the unit level mm -hmm. and then I have all my modules so then I for example in this module module six I have three lessons and I have a module project at the end. Mm -hmm. So these are all content folders. So then the kids would know, oh, lesson one, click in lesson one. Everything's stepped out for them and they see what they're supposed to do. When we went in that one unit and we had to look for other people's stuff, did you find? Nothing. You didn't find anything that you- Nothing that I could use. Like that you could use. No, so I, this is all- I saw things I, I didn't like. Yes. that I wanted to fix. Yeah, absolutely. So I didn't see anything that I could use. The only thing that I did do that if you wanted to, you could have, um, I created a pre-course unit, which kind of goes through Blackboard. Um, like. Did you? To yeah. explain so that so if they have trouble with it, they, right. you, you could do for them what you did for me. You sent me that video. Right, so they would go through and they would have lesson one. Um, what should I do first? So there's a video about setting up their profile, um, and then it says, okay, now go look at the announcements page. So when they click on that link, it takes them to the announcements. Okay. No. And then it says, if you're oh. here. You're making me think of all the additional things that I have to do. <laughs> you know, that everybody click here, has to do. Takes you back. So and then really, their daily routines in what here. they should have you do is prepare one of these that could be attached to everybody's. I did, yeah. It's just, it, it just would How need to, use to be Blackboard. modified. But it's, no, I mean, uh, how to use Blackboard that every teacher that has an online course could just insert into mm -hmm. how to use Blackboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you did? No, I didn't. I did Don't one specifically for my course, but it wouldn't be that hard to modify it, something like this. But you know. But I think they should, when they're paying you to be <laughs> Aaron, Aaron <laughs> Mahaf. Well, I haven't gotten the job yet, so I haven't, <laughs> haven't even posted yet. So, oh, But, uh, so... What else can we answer real quick before you subtitles have to go? Subtitles I asked you about subtitles I asked. How do you make sure that the test is timed? Ah. So oh. when you go into assessments. I put a test in there somewhere. Okay. So let me go into one of my units. Let me turn my editing mode back on. Oh, it's what do you, why would you if turn you, it off? So you can see what the kids see. Oh, okay. So if you okay. turn that off, you can kind of see what the kids see. Oh, okay. I'll do that. So when I go to an assessment and I click a test, okay? Identify these ancient cultures. I'm going to create a new test. Oh, I I'm just going to show you. I have to do it. I I can't have I already done it. I think you can it. edit it, um, and I you can get back go to the same here information. To go to edit. Yeah, so just go to edit the test. Uh, actually, no. You want to go back and go to edit test options. So let's go back. Yeah, because it, it did it without me putting in the, the right. and I couldn't figure out how to get back to it. I know how to stick it in there. So <laughs> when you scroll down now, you have I was all waiting the for the, it didn't have them. that you're allowed to do. So you see, yeah, it takes oh, you right I see. to this, I see. which is not what you want. Oh, so I did put 25 minutes, so but I wanted to put in, I wanted to put in, 
the uh, points point structure right and so I couldn't. it doesn't give you like it would make sense that it takes you right to that but it doesn't it takes you to this so um, look at that yeah so it's not helpful at all no. so what you have to do is once you've created the test then you got to go back to where you put the test um, and edit it so you could either I just happen to be in this section but you could create a link to test surveys and pools on the left hand side here so we could do another tool link. No, I want to fix this sucker. <laughs> I want to fix right, so the I'm going to do assessment. this for you in the video so you can see how to do this. So oh, I have a minute to get back to All right, so test. <gasps> I was late before. Oops. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can just close it up. I yeah, you should be fine just closing it. All right, and I'll send you this link so you can kind of see what we did. All right? Yes, I need a, an extended period of time. As <laughs> you can say, thank you, thank you. No problem. Do you want me to close this? No, no, it's good. It's fine. So, to edit the test, let me find my test here. I'll just do it this one here. So, here, right click on it, click. And that's the actual quiz. Test settings available, unavailable, start dates, end dates, due date number of attempts, so you can set the, the start time, end time, and all those settings in there. And then we can also get to it. Let's see if I can get back to that link. Here it must be in the grading center. That's where it's got to be. Evaluation, let's see. Tests. So that's how you get to it. Nope, that's not what I wanted. So it's under class tools. Class tools, test surveys and pools. These are all of your tests, surveys and, and pools that you did. And we can see the test that I just made and go to edit. And I can go to question settings. surveys and pools I can go to
right, so I think I have to go back to the original test. Let me find it. So I can build this here. It's just a place that I can build it. So I'm going to a new test. Let's do this again. Create test test. This, go to the question settings, provide feedback for individual users, use default points, specify number of points, submit. Okay, then I go back to where I put the test at. test. Alright, I will have to make a video on that separately.